My name is Liz Kolb. I am a clinical associate professor at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan at the School of Education. And I get to teach and work with pre-service and in-service teachers on how they're using technology in their classrooms. And recently I wrote a book called Learning First, Technology Second. And that book really is about how we can use research informed strategies when we are integrating technology into our classrooms. And the reason I think it's important to use research informed strategies is because for many years we were not using them, including myself. And I wanna give a short story about that. When I first started teaching around 1996, I was asked to be on a technology committee, mostly because nobody else wanted to be on the committee. And the first workshop I was sent to was a workshop on a new tool that I thought had a really funny sounding name. It was PowerPoint. And I got there and I started to see how PowerPoint worked and I thought it was movie magic. I thought it was amazing. So I decided, I want to bring this back into my classroom. So that night, I had been preparing for a lecture on the French Revolution with my ninth graders. I decided to turn the lecture into a PowerPoint rather than an old transparency lecture. And so I stayed up all night because in 1996, I didn't have the internet at home, so I had to use CD-ROMs and all sorts of gadgets to get uh, a PowerPoint together. So after I stayed up all night, I wheeled in a TV into my ninth grade classroom and I plugged my computer into the TV and I projected the PowerPoint. And my students, they were, a lot of them were struggling learners. They, it was, it was a, a very, um, very much kind of a remedial class. My students all of a sudden lifted their heads up off their desks and they were smiling and laughing and pointing at things in the PowerPoint. And I thought, oh, this is amazing. My principal walked by and he gave me a thumbs up, like good job. And I thought, this is it. This is the magic. This is what you need to do. Students will learn as long as they have a PowerPoint in front of them. So I decided to turn all of the rest of my um, lectures of that unit into a PowerPoint. By the end of those two weeks on the French Revolution, my students' heads were back down on their desks. When I looked at their learning outcomes, it didn't change. If a C student, if they were a C student going into the project, they were a C student coming out. There was no change in their actual learning outcome. And when I look back on that, I realized what I did was not great learning with technology. It was kind of a gimmick to get the students' attention, to get them to behave, to get them to um, make sure that they were focusing on what I was doing but there was no impact on their actual learning. So I've spent a long time since then trying to figure out how I can use technology to actually impact the learning. And what I've realized it came down to is making sure that we're using good research informed strategies around and with technology. And that is what um, this Learning First Technology Second book is all about. It's about how we take what we know about good learning. For example, we know learning is social. So why are we putting students in corners with technology and not allowing them to actually reflect on what they're doing in the technology or talk about what they're doing in the technology or have discussions? We need to be merging those things together and making sure that our learning is actually social. So yes, maybe they're using a piece of software that is one-to-one, -one, like adaptive software, but there's no reason why they can't take a pause and talk about what they're doing and do turn and talks. So making sure that these research-informed strategies are happening with the technology can absolutely be a game changer for the classroom. And one of the things that I, I try to encourage teachers to do is if they're interested in doing something with technology in the classroom, look to see if there's research around it and then use that research to inform the choices that they're going to make with technology in their classroom. And just to give one last example of how research has changed my classroom teaching, uh, one, one area that we talk a lot about today is multitasking and technology. And if you ask people, they have all sorts of different opinions of whether or not we can multitask. Um, however, the research is really clear around multitasking. 
And before I read the research around multitasking and technology, I was a university professor that allowed my students to have ubiquitous access to their technology devices throughout my class they were allowed to have it out and open at all times because I thought I was modeling the future ready 21st century classroom that uh, is in all the pictures. And even though my students' heads may have been down and maybe they weren't looking me in the eye, I thought, well, they're still engaging with their technology and they're probably looking up definitions of things we're talking about in class, even if they're not participating in the discussion. And then I read the research on multitasking and technology and the research, really the conclusion for the research I read is that there is no such thing as multitasking when it comes to technology. And as a matter of fact, the students tend to have lower memory capacity, lower ability to retain and recall information when they have their technology out in front of them during instructional time. Even if they have it close to them, like if their smart device is next to them, they have less recall than a student whose smart device might be away in their backpack. This was a game changer for me. I completely changed the structure of my class around technology. No more could my students just have laptops out if we're having a discussion. If we're having a discussion, laptops should be away and we have our face-to-face -face discussion. If we need to maybe look something up, I can assign a couple of students to open up their devices, look something up, report out, and then put the devices away and come back to the discussion. And ever since I have done that, I have found I have more students participating in our classroom activities and discussions. I have less students asking me to repeat things or other students to repeat things because they're now fully engaged in what's happening in class and their minds are not elsewhere. So by using the research, I was able to inform my classroom instruction. And that is what I'm hoping that more and more teachers are, are going to be able to do. Now that we have a lot of research around good teaching and learning with technology, let's use it as teachers to inform our practice so that when parents, administrators, others are asking us why we're using the technology, we can give them a firm answer based on the research.